G'day guys and welcome to another Blender Buzz tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this lightsaber here and it's going to be a really fun little scene. Um, I'm going to set up a um, backdrop and some lighting and a camera and after we've rendered it we're going to just go into the um, compositor and just do a little bit of compositing in here and it's going to be pretty straightforward so um, yeah I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and get a reference image for the lightsaber. So I'm going to go here to my internet and I'm just going to go to Google Images. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in light, sorry, my keys, lightsaber. And I'm going to go to Images, and maybe lightsaber reference. I'm just going to type that in. And I'm going to look for a good reference image. So let's have a look, see which one we can find. Um, I found a good one yesterday. I'll try and find it again. <clears throat> um, yeah, here, this one right here at the top. So I'm going to get this one here. That one looks good. And I'm going to go right click, save image as and then go to my desktop and I'm just going to save it on my desktop for now um, it says it already exists so yeah I'm just going to say yes okay now I'm going to close this up and now you can see here on my desktop I have this image that's going to be our reference image okay so now that we've done that let's get into blender and do the fun stuff so I'm going to open up a new scene in blender and I'm going to pull my blender to the side here and I'm just going to press A to select everything and X to delete and I'm just going to take this image and drag it in here and now when I um, go into my front orthographic view you can see we have the image in here and another thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to press my N key I'm going to bring up my screencast keys down here so you guys can see what I am doing during this whole process so that's cool, now we're ready to start modeling so you can see by the looks of this, a cylinder would be a good shape to start with so I'm going to go add, mesh, and I'm going to add a cylinder and I'm going to go into wireframe by pressing Z and then R, Y, 90. And then I'm going to move this cylinder up to here. I'm going to press G and move it and then size it down. And what I'm trying to do here is match it up as good as I can. And I think something like that looks good. And that's really good. Now I'm going to go into edit mode. Make sure I'm still in wireframe. And I'm going to select um, B box, select these. Drag them to this point here. And you can see we have a little inset here. And then go extrude size a tiny bit in, extrude, and then extrude size a tiny little bit up, and then extrude. And I'm going to pull it to this point. Now, one thing I need to tell you guys before we go any further is that this is an image, so it's not orthographic. So we're going to have to just do our best to get it as close as we can, but we're not going to get it exact. Because we're looking at this from an orthographic view, and this is a perspective photo. So we're going to just have to do our best. So I'm going to line it up to about there. Extrude size in like so. Extrude it to there. And then we can see extrude size. Extrude it out a little bit more to this point. And I'm just going to extrude this to here. And then extrude this to here. And then I'm going to extrude this one to the end here to about there. And now we have the back part of it made. And we're going to make these little... Um, these little objects on here, we're going to make them separately. I've, I've found a good way of making them, which I'll show you in a bit. Now I'm going to go here to the front. I'm going to select these guys. I'm going to pull them all the way up to here. And it looks like this kind of goes down a bit. So I'm going to go extrude, then size to like that, and then extrude to about here. Now what you can notice is, we're going to notice is this isn't exact. See, this isn't, this goes, this is a little bit more here than it is there, but don't worry about it. And we're just trying to get this as close as possible. So what I'm going to do now is extrude again. And go to here. I'm going to size it down. Extrude a little bit. Because there's a little bit of a, uh, a gap there. And I'm going to extrude again. To there. And I'm going to size it up. Right to where that starts there. And then extrude. A little bit like so. And then extrude size. And maybe bring this up like so. So instead of having to do this whole process over and over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shift. I'm going to, <clears throat> with those vertices selected, I'm going to go control plus, and I'm going to select all the way up to the back, go shift, duplicate, X, move it along the X, and then move it 
to here so there's vertices on top of each other and you can see that um, this is really close so it all merges because um, when, I, when I select everything and I go merge remove doubles where these points are really close they're going to merge so what I'm going to do is I might just go ahead and um, size that up a little bit these two just a little bit so it's closer to about there yeah I think that looks good so if I go control L G just move it as close as I can G on the X and now I'm going to go shift duplicate X move it to here and then I'm just going to press control R and it's going to dupl duplicate that same action over and over and I'm going to go to about there control R oops control R there we go and I mean shift R sorry so now you can see here we have we've made these so to make these all one object I'm gonna go select everything and then I'm gonna go here to what says well I might just deselect the back because there's some points here at the back that are really close like those ones we don't want them to merge so with all of these selected here at the front I'm gonna go remove doubles and down here where it says merge distance I'm just gonna make that higher and you, here you can see the top remove 200 and 56 vertices so that's good so this is now one solid object if I go control L you'll see it selects everything that's really awesome and now the next step um, is going to be to go into wireframe again select these front ones here and I'm going to pull this one a little bit more forward <clears throat> and then I'm going to go extrude size move this here and also I'm going to go ahead and extrude again to here and and we're going to subdivide this later so I don't have to worry about it being exact so move that there and then go here extrude size extrude it to about here then extrude size and like I said this is you'll see this is in perspective and we're modeling an orthographic so it's going to look a little bit weird so but we just have to do the best we can and then I'm going to extrude this here to this front part here and now it's going to go in again so I'm going to extrude the sides and then extrude to here and extrude out and then extrude in and extrude S and then extrude and extrude sides and extrude and then extrude S and then this little lip here and then extrude size in like so and then extrude to there and there we pretty much now have our lightsaber so um, one thing I'm going to do now is before we go any further I'm going to go and I'm going to subdivide this so I'm going to go here to my modifiers panel and I'm going to go subdivision surface and now you're going to see it messes things up so we're going to go in here and we're going to open up our properties panel by pressing N so let me fix something here so I'm going to open up my properties panel by um, pressing N and up here you can see um, edge data and we're going to have an option here called mean crease so I'm going to go ahead and loop select these areas that I want to be sharp um, actually go to edge select these ones here and then I'm going to pull this all the way up to one and it's going to make these values sharper so I'm going to go here increase the mean the mean crease grab this edge here pull it all the way up to one and I'm pretty essentially just going to do this for all the areas that we don't want to be smoothed um, not that one that doesn't matter and this one here and increase it like so and um, here and then I select all these ones here like so and this is a little bit of a tedious process but um, I'm just gonna go for here like so select these select these two these two um, this one this one and this one and I'm going to increase those to one as well and um, maybe even this one here as well maybe not all the way to one just to 0.6 and um, and then these ones here we, we need them to be sharp all the way to one 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 there we go and you can see it's starting to look really um, really good and what this is going to do it's going to make it nice and round and subdivided where we want it to be and in the areas we want it to be sharp 
um, it's going to be sharp. So if I go here, and um, and pretty much just all the all the areas we know it has to be straight. And um, just this one here, this one, this one. And I'm going to work a little bit faster here, but um, you can just pause and follow along as you need to. And these ones here, and it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. I mean anywhere, just you know you can see it needs to be straight. And these ones here, like so. Voila, and there we have it. That is pretty much a lightsaber um, done modeling. So I'm going to go smooth shading, and I'm also going to go ahead and add under the subdivision surface an edge split modifier. And it's just going to clean up that weird shading effect that is going on there. And um, yeah, it's doing making some weird artifacts there, but we'll we'll deal with those later. And that's looking pretty good. So um, now one of the second parts we need to start modeling now. Oh yeah, and also just click get your lightsaber, go to your subdivision surface modifier and just enable optimal display so you can see through it better. And um, okay, now when it comes to making these little tabs here, the best way I've found is just to model one individually and then shift duplicate it around an access point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cursor about there. I'm gonna go add mesh, and this is an object mode. I'm gonna, sorry, add a cube. I'm gonna add mesh, I'm gonna add a cube. And I'm going to size it down, like so. I'm going to G to move it up, size it down, and then size it on the X to about that size. And then I'm going to go to my right orthographic view and move it out to here. Move it down to about here. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and select this one here, size it down, and pull it in like so. And then gonna select this face and extrude it just a little bit and then X, delete that face. And I'm gonna select this whole thing here and go to my top view and I'm just gonna make sure its pivot point is at the very back, like so. Cool, and now I have this one and I can take it here, move it in like so. And to duplicate it around, I'm gonna go ahead and select my lightsaber and I go Shift S and then I'm gonna go cursor to selected. So it's going to put this cursor right in the center of this geometry. And then if I select this guy here, and I um, enable my um, 3D cursor here, so now it's going to rotate, when I duplicate it and rotate, it's going to rotate only around the center of this object, where the cursor is now placed. So I'm going to duplicate this six times, because I estimate there's about six of these little prongs around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Shift, Duplicate, right click, um, and then I'm going to go R, Y, um, R, X, and then go 60, because three, um, six, 360 divided by 3, um, by 6, is 60. So if I go Enter, and then I go um, Shift, Duplicate, R, X again, and then 60. And, and actually, if I press Control R, I mean Shift R, it'll duplicate that step. And there you can see I have made six of these tabs around here like so. And that's the modeling done for that, pretty much. So if you look now, we can see in a short amount of time, we have made um, most of our lightsaber. And um, later on, I'll make this little thing here as well. And so I suppose we can start setting up the materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, first of all, go into um, Cycles Render, this one right here. And then I go to my front orthographic view. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open up this tab a little bit more, go to my materials tab, select my lightsaber and go new, and I'm just going to call this one base. And this is going to be the base color for now. And then on top of that, I'll start adding other colors. So I'm going to create my first color. I'm going to call this copper, like so. And the reason I'm calling copper, because you can see this metal here looks like a copper. So that's the first metal I'm going to make is the copper. So I'm going to go ahead and in my this. Uh, viewport settings here make this just a coppery kind of color so I know it's been applied. So we're going to edit mode now. I'm going to go ahead and just select all these areas that need the copper applied and go assign. And we can also see here uh, where else is copper? Okay, there's only this copper looking metal in one point. And now we can see here we have this dark looking kind of gun metal. So I'm going to make that the second one. I'm going to call this dark metal. So I'm going to go dark metal like so and I'm gonna go in my viewport make this color dark like this so I know it's been applied and then I'm gonna select all these areas 
where this dark metal needs to be applied to. Um, so I think it's this here, like so. I'm gonna go to assign, and then all these areas here, like in between here. And in fact, I'm just gonna select all of this here, and then just deselect the ones that need to be shiny. So these ones. like so and now I'm gonna go ahead and just assign like so and um, let's have a look what else needs to be dark um, okay now this area here looks like it needs the shinier metal so I'm gonna go um, light metal okay and I'm gonna go assign and I'm just gonna make this a light gray like so and now we can see the light gray has been like maybe you make it like a blue kind of like that so for now just so I can know it's been applied and then um, yeah um, let's have a look what else I need to do because I'm starting to notice now that these two look a little bit different these two images so what I might have to do is just just stick to this one um, use this one that we've worked off as the reference for our colors so I'm gonna ignore this one for now so um, yeah so everything here at the back is shiny so I'm gonna go in here wireframe select all this and I'm going to add the light metal so I'm going to assign and um, I'm going to select all these guys here and I'm going to control J it's going to make them all one object and then go, I'm going to go into edit mode select all of them by pressing A and then control I mean shift S and then cursor to select selected and go to edit mode and with the, with the cursor still in that position I'm going to go control alt shift C control alt shift C and then I'm going to go cur origin to 3D cursor now this thing has its own origin point in the center awesome and now I'm going to also go ahead and just give it <coughs> the light metal material and what else do I need to do um, let's see at the front we also have the light metal so I'm just going to go ahead and select these guys here and I'm going to go light metal and apply that and obviously these guys here as well I'm just going to select all of them like so and I'm going to go assign the light metal that's cool let's have a look looks pretty good I think we got it pretty accurate I think this one here is supposed to be light so I'm just going to select these guys here and make that light metal sign. And you no, know, we're not gonna get 100% because a lot of these replicas and props aren't exactly the same. So we're gonna try and get it as close as we can. So another thing I'm gonna do here is just select this one in the front, extrude size, oops, make sure I go back into median point, size in like this, and then extrude in like so. And that's pretty much it. Now we have all our materials applied and we have all of our modeling done the most of it we still have to make this little tab here but um before we do it i'm just going to work on set up a little scene here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my front orthographic view set the cursor to the center add a mesh size it up to about the size of the grid floor and then i'm going to, go to edit mode <coughs> and extrude this up move it here <coughs> excuse me select this guy here and then shift I mean control B to add in this bevel here and this can enable smooth and size it on the X a bit maybe and then I'm also going to go ahead my front view just add a camera like so go into my camera and then G to zoom out move up a little bit like so and then I'm just gonna um, my microphone's kind of in a way so it makes it awkward <laughs> So I'm just going to go ahead and control B to make a box in here. And that's just going to enable to render only inside of that box. And I'm also going to go ahead, my front view, just add a lamp. Like so, I'm going to add a sun lamp. Put it here like so. Make the strength free. Like so. And then go to my top view. Rotate it like so. And maybe just shift duplicate it here and turn that as well. So we're going to my camera view now. It's a little bit too strong. Um, maybe make that one. Make this one, two. 
And that's looking pretty good. So now we have a temporary um, scene here that we can start working on. So another thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to go into my compositing. Now that I'm in my um, node editor here, in my compositing, I'm going to go ahead and select my lightsaber and go to my materials tab. And I'm going to go, first of all, so select copper. And I'm going to go here. And we can see by default it has made this, um, this diffuse, white, white diffuse. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to go shader, glossy. I'm going to sh shift duplicate the glossy. And I'm going to also get a mix shader, put it here. And I'm going to plug it into these two sockets and put the output in the surface. And the top one, I'm going to make like a light peachy kind of color, like so. Maybe like that. And this one, I'm going to make a darker um, kind of color like that. So if I render that now, we can see that it looks like copper. And I'm just going to go ahead and shift duplicate the mix shader. I'm also going to go ahead and get a anisotropic. So this one here. And I plug it into the bottom shader here. And I'm just going to play around with the roughness. Decrease it maybe a little bit. And play around with the anisotropy value. Maybe decrease the factor, something like that. And I think that looks good and make it slightly bluish. And that's just a basic copper material for now. And now we've made our copper. Now we can make the shiny metal bits. I'm gonna go to my light metal. And I'm gonna um, actually just go to my copper here. I'm gonna press A to select everything. Control C, go to my light metal. And then just um, select everything here. X delete and then control V and then paste it in here and I'm just gonna make this white like here as well and now we have our shiny metal material and I might just um, add a bit more anisotropy like so maybe make that 0.4 like that I think that looks like a really cool metal and um, play around with these settings. And okay, that's our metal for now. And now we can go, i um, gonna select um, Control C, all of this, go to our dark metal, delete these guys, and then Control V. And now I'm just gonna make this darker. As you can see here, so if I just go in here, make, make both of these dark, so. And I might have to increase the roughness a little bit as well. Um, get rid of the anisotropy, so just plug this in here, and um, yeah, like think like that. And for now, that looks good. That's a pretty good color. And then what else can we do? And um, what other colors do we have? Um, so we've made these three metals, and I'm just gonna get rid of the base. We don't need it for now. And there we have it. We've pretty much made our basic materials, so um, that's cool. Um, one more thing we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just select the scene and the light and the camera. And I'm just going to go, con um, just press M and I'm going to move it to the second layer. I'm going to make sure I'm on the first layer. Go to the front. And now we're just going to model this little thing here, this little button. And um, on all the references I've looked at, they all look kind of different, so we're just going to have to kind of use our imagination and do the best we can, and maybe for all you lightsaber enthusiasts out there, you guys know how this should look like, so you can make it the right way. <laughs> so I'm just going to do the best I can, so I'm going to move it here, and um, I think maybe come in here, delete this face, select all of that, move it up, and get to the front. And I think I'm just going to make this one here. It looks simpler, so I'm just going to go Control R, and then just Double G to move it. So edge slide, and then I'm going to go here, loop select this, and then extrude size just a little bit, and then I'm going to come in here, size it on a Y, and then then just grab this face here, and then I'm going to go extrude size, and a little bit, and then pull it down like so. And then we have something like that. I'm going to give it the shiny metal material. So if I, um, if I go into my front orthographic view, um, I even move this in, go into my edit view, 
select these bottom vertices, maybe move this down just a little bit like so. And one thing I could do to make this look a bit more interesting, I'm just going to make the top ones here the copper material. So I'm going to add that material here and assign it. So now we have the copper and maybe in here I'll make it the dark metal. So if I go here, I'm going to add the dark metal and assign it. And there we have the beginnings of a really cool looking lightsaber. So um, yeah, I'm going to tab out of edit mode. Now one thing that I suppose you guys also want to see how to do is to I think I should just move this in. I think it looks better when it's lower. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of the background image. Or maybe not. Wait, I've, I see there's a few little details I could add here. So maybe over here I'm going to go tab into edit mode, control R to make a cut, and then control B to split this, and then extrude S, size it in a little bit. And I'm just going to select these here and increase and make a crease. Maybe do a loop cup, cut in the middle and then size it in a bit. And now we have that nice little divider there and I think that looks quite cool. And you guys are welcome to go and add all these little details if you want to. I'm just going to show you how to make the main thing. So one thing um, that I decided to make as well in this video is to make the little light part here. And um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to go um, move the cursor to the center. I'm going to take this guy and this guy here and select this guy as well, select everything, and then move them down. I'm going to try and move them as close to, as to the center as possible. So they're right on that grid line. Maybe move it down a little bit like so. Awesome. And I'm also going to go and um, get my scene back. So I'm going to holding and shift select this one here as well. Um, actually just go to my front the first scene again select like everything just move it up to here and go to my right view I'm gonna rotate it like so and I'm gonna go ahead and um, bring in my scene and if I go now and I select this I can move it down like so and what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to make um, place my lightsaber in the scene so I'm just going to move it around, maybe like so. Okay, and make it look like it's sitting on the floor. Um, yeah, there we go. That looks really good. And I'm going to go to my top view. And yeah, that looks good for now. So if I go into my camera view and go to my camera, and I go to my camera settings here, and I'm going to make the resolution 1280 by 720 and I'm gonna make it a hundred percent and here my sampling I'm gonna make my preview 130 and my render I'll just leave that at 128 so I go down I render that control I mean shift Z you can see here it looks pretty good um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this border and I'm gonna go move my camera around and I think I'm going to do something like so, and maybe rotate it, nah, I'm just going to leave it for, looking like this for now. So another thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the little lightsaber, the actual beam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, I'm going to go and select um, this face right here, I'm going to shift duplicate, and then G, I'm going to move it along the X, and go P to separate it, make it its own object. And I'm going to go in here, select it, go into edit mode, and I'm going to go extrude. And I'm just going to extrude it out like so, and then X, and just delete the face on the end. And I'm going to give this its own material. So I'm going to get rid of all these materials on it. And I'm just going to go and grab that base material. We'll just make this the light itself. And I'm going to go and just to see that it's been applied to make that yellow. And I'm going to make the color of this one, um, I think I'm going to make it purple. I think that's a good color. Like, um, that's, a, that's a good lightsaber color. And you can make yours whatever you want. And now I'm going to go and go to my compositing. And I'm just going to go ahead and move my camera to there so I, I can see what I'm doing. And maybe box, um, 
render make a border so it renders within the border and now I'm just going to make a material for this. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this diff um, diffuse here. And I'm going to go and make an emission shader. So I get the emission. What's it doing? Come on. Where's the emission? Um, yeah, emission. Something is going on here to make a new material. Shader emission, okay. And I'm going to plug the emission into the surface. And I'm going to make this um, the color here, I'm going to make that purple, like I said. Maybe this kind of purple, like so. And I'm also going to go ahead and increase the strength to four. And um, now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to back to my default and I'm going to go ahead and with this material selected in the bottom here, you can see under settings, uh, material index. So I'm going to make that a material index of one and I'm going to do a quick render Whoop, before I go. Um, just go to my um, scenes here, go to my passes and I'm going to enable material index so we can add um, a glow effect to the lightsaber. So I'm going to go and I'm going to give it a quick render. This isn't the final render at all, and um, I'm just going to let it render, and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, cool, that's now done rendering, so I'm going to go to my compositing, and I'm going to click here in my um, layers tab here, and go use nodes, and I'm going to do backdrop, and if I go and I get a viewer node, plug this in here, <clears throat> we can now see that we have our image in the background, and I'm going to press V to zoom out. And one thing I'm going to do, we now applied a material index to this lightsaber beam. So I'm going to go ahead and get an ID mask. I'm just going to type an ID. And then I plug the index material in here. And we set the material index to 1, so we're going to make it 1. I'm going to get a mix shader, plug the alpha into the factor, and then take the image and plug it into the, the bottom here. And then if we look for here, we can see it isolates it. So if I make this black in the background, we can now see that we only have this. So I'm going to now go and get a glare node, put it in here, and put the threshold to zero. And I'm going to make this fog glow, like so. And I'm going to increase the size. So what we do now is we get the mix node, shift duplicate this one. I'm going to take the image here, plug it in the bottom, and set this to add. And I'm going to um, plug it in here to the, um, the composite and the viewer. So now, now what we have is we have um, the ID mask, this mix shader, the glare node, and then these two are now being combined with the main image with this add node. So now we have this glow effect that is now added to the scene. Um, and that's really cool. So when we increase the emission strength later, it's also going to make it um, make that look more intense. So we, we're now going to go ahead and set up a proper scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the lightsaber and all its parts. Actually select the camera, the scene and the lights. Go to the top view and I'm going to rotate it like so. And move it here and maybe like so. And then I'm going to select my camera, move it here. And now we're just going to move it around and play with things. Lightsaber. And you can spend a whole day placing your camera. I'm just going to keep it simple. Make a border here. And that looks pretty cool. And maybe move it here. And I'm going to go to my camera settings here. And I'm just going to enable limits so we can add some depth of field. And I'm going to go ahead and select the lightsaber here as the object. And I'm going to make this f-stop and I'm going to decrease it as much as I can. Maybe now increase it. And that's just going to give it that depth of field look. I think that looks pretty good. And um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to my world settings, use nodes. I'm going to make my world dark. And I'm also going to go to my sun lamps here, and I'm going to make the strength much less. So I'm going to make this like 
point five, and this one I'm going to make like point two. So we go in here, um, maybe increase the st strength here. And I'm also going to go ahead and just shift duplicate the sun lamp, put it at the top, and make this an area lamp, increase the size. And I'm going to just make that like a strength of about 600, maybe, maybe 700, like so. And um, yep, maybe move the plane back a bit because it's going into the lightsaber. Okay, I think that looks good. So I render now. Yeah, that looks really awesome. So that's just a nice little scene for our lightsaber for now. And if I go and select my saber here, and I'm just gonna make the strength something like um, five. And make it a much darker purple. Like so. And if I go ahead now, I'm just gonna give that a quick wait. Maybe I can make give the background a darker color as well. So I'm just gonna go new. I'm just gonna make that dark like so. Maybe like so. And um, go to my compositing. Go to my materials here. And just um, shader, mix shader, shader, glossy. And um, Yeah, make it kind of like ref like a reflective surface, like that. I think um, just so it just comes through and then make this dark. Yeah, I think that looks really cool. And um, so if I go now to my default, I'm gonna quickly give it a render. And when it's done rendering, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like and then we'll do a bit of final compositing. Okay, now it's done rendering, so I'm going to go to my compositing, and then I'm going to go here to my Layers tab, and in here, I'm going to go ahead and just move move these guys here, G, and then just hold in Shift and cut them together, and in here, I'm going to put a Lens Distortion node, and I really like a Lens Distortion node. I think most of my viewers know that by now, and I make the distort here, point 0.2, I mean, sorry, 0 0.02, and I'm going to make the dispersion here 0 0.03, like so, and it's going to give it a nice little bit of noise, um, this little colored effect here on the edges, and I'm going to go fit, so it's going to fit it, and I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to get a despeckle node, and I'm going to put it um, in here, and I'm going to dec make the factor like 0.7, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna play around with the neighbor size. Let's see, does it move anything? Let's make this 0.7, sorry, 0 0.7. I'm gonna make this guy 0.8. And then I'm gonna decrease it like so. And it's just gonna help get a little rid of a little bit of that noise and it might be different for your settings, but um, just play around with it and see what you get. So I think I'm just going to leave leave it at that, and um, that looks pretty good. And with the glare here, what we can do is we can um, we can make it a streaks, or we can make it a ghost effect. Um, well, what we could do to make it look a little bit better is I'm going to make this simple stars. And I'm going to shift duplicate this and I'm going to make this one fog glow and I'm going to make the quality high and of this one I'm also going to make the quality high and now we can see we have this really cool looking um, lighting effect um, I think it looks really cool so you guys yeah thank you for watching um, now if we want a nice less noise all you have to do in the final render is simply just set the render samples higher. And that's what I did for my final image. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and there will be um, lots more videos, lots of 
videos still to come in the future. So yeah, thank you for watching.